In this video, I'm sweetening audio when working in between your digital audio workstation and your video editing software. This of course applies to just editing your audio within your NLE, but I like doing it this way. I prefer using a DAW. It's what they're made for. To my ear, the end result is higher quality. So, you know, Let's do it. Before we dive in, I'm on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers. So it would really mean the world to me if you could take a second just to hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, it helps me out, and I really appreciate it. It just means a lot to me. Thank you in advance. Also, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bits you want. No problem. These videos are not sponsored, but they are made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon go back into the channel, I buy gear, I do unbiased reviews, and then I give the gear to my backers. If that's of interest, all the details you can find below. It's a great way to support the channel, and plus, you know, you can win some cool stuff. Right, onward. I have to acknowledge that this video was actually a viewer's idea. Uh, username C Craig, thank you very much. Uh, I, I was more than happy to oblige, and I appreciate the awesome idea. So here we go. I, I read your comments, so everyone else, please, down below, you know, more than happy. To demonstrate this, in this video, I'm gonna be using the two Apple bits of software, Logic and Final Cut. It's just my preference. Uh, so any any two combinations of NLE and DAW will work perfectly well. There are, believe it or not, five stages of processing, of sweetening that I use. And at this stage, you're probably thinking, five, really? And yes, five stages to help you improve the quality of your audio, and they are EQ, dynamic EQ, compression, EQ again, and then limiting. Let me show you exactly why. So here we are in Logic, and you can see on our master bus, here are the five steps. And firstly, we have EQ. So let me show you what this clip sounds like first without anything, here it goes. Next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things and mirroring my comments of the build quality, I've just had such a pleasing good time using this interface. So here you can see our plugin and I'm just gonna enable it. And I've just made a few small tweaks and firstly starting with a low cut. You know, this is kind of an essential thing to do. You have to just cut out the low frequencies because firstly, you're not gonna hear them on most devices. And these are kind of the sub low frequencies that I'm cutting. It's also not that natural to hear them on a vocal. So let's get rid of them. And finally, they are gonna cause problems with headroom and they're also going to trigger the compression that we've got happening later on. Next, I've got this frequency. This is at 200 and about 220, anywhere between 220 and 250. And this is a boxy sounding frequency. And I've only reduced a tiny bit. We're talking a decibel, not much. I like subtle surgical tweaks here. And anything that sounds sort of boxy, it, it just doesn't sound very professional to me. So I like to take out just a little bit. Then we have the next tweak and it's up here at near 800 Hertz. Now what this is for me is, you know that really rubbishy sounding old vintage kind of radio sound? Well, that to me, is prime kind of 800 hertz territory. And, you know, if you listen to it in isolation, you'd hear basically that kind of sound. So I've taken out, again, around one dB. Remember, this is to sweeten audio. We are starting with audio that, you know, was well recorded. That's all we wanna do, subtle. And then finally, I've added a low pass meaning I've cut some of the high frequencies and I've got it set pretty high up here at around 15K. Again, we're just removing information that you're probably not gonna hear on most devices. It's just not necessary. And the other thing is sometimes by removing top end, it can make the signal sound more classy. And I know that that kind of goes against people's instinct. They think, oh, you know, lots of that sort of airy top end sounds really classy, but actually it's not always the case. Here's what it sounds like with this before then after. Next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things. And next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things. And it's just slightly cleaner. That's exactly what we want. We're just cleaning things up and that's it. Moving on and this is our dynamic EQ. Basically, it's a cross between EQ and compression. It's selectively reducing the volume of, you know, whichever frequencies you pick. Now, you could use this to control the bass frequencies if you want to. It's quite an elegant solution for that. I'm using it to DS and that's probably the most common use of it. And for my voice, when I look at the frequency analyzer, 
This is around where my voice, you'll hear the sibilance, it's around 6K. That's where I've set it on here. I've set it to 6K. And this here is a free plugin. It's called TDR Nova from Tokyo Dawn Records. It's brilliant. You should download it. It's completely free. Do it. It's really good. Uh, I didn't mention the first one, by the way. The first plugin I used was uh, FabFilter Pro, Pro Q3. Excellent EQ plugin, but it is something that you, you know, it's a paid plugin. So I think it's worth it. But, you know, any kind of EQ plugin will work in the place of it. It doesn't matter if, you know, you could go with a free one if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, this is TDR Nova before and after. Next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things. And next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things. And just reduces it a little bit. Not too much. You don't want it to go too so far that it sounds like you're lisping. That's the last thing you want. But, you know, just tames them a little bit. And that's the smart way to do it. You wouldn't want to do this on our EQ plugin because removing all of one frequency see like that is just not the smart way to do it. You want to selectively remove it when it gets too loud. Anyway, moving on and we've got our compression. Again, it's FabFilter Pro C2, but you can use any compression plugin for this. And all I'm going to do in this one, as you can see at the ratio, I've got set two to one, so it's not going to be reducing much. And the point of this really is to control our dynamics. I'm not looking to smash it. All I want to do is control the dynamics. You can see our waveform at the moment is very dynamic as voice usually is. You know, there's some quiet bits here, some louder bits here, and I just want to tackle basically just these peaks a little bit and then bring the, the overall volume of, you know, the, the quieter bits up just a little bit. And that's that's what I've done. Here's before and after. Next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things. And next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things. And and then when you look at the plugin, you can see it's taking off maybe, I don't know, three three to five dB, something like that. Not, not much at all. I'm keeping it subtle. And last thing on this note, I'm using a fairly fast attack. And that's because I want to kind of tame these peaks. And attack really is one of the most important controls on a compressor. It really shapes the tone that you end up with. Moving on now, and we've got our post-compression EQ. And you're probably wondering, why am I EQing before and after the compression? And there's a really logical reason for that. The general rule of thumb is to cut frequencies before your compression and then boost frequencies after your compression. I will explain a little bit more about that in just a bit, but for now we're just going to move on and look what we've done with this one. Now, I think this, as I said, was pretty well recorded, so I'm not going to do much at this stage. You may not need to do anything, but for example, if you thought that your vocal sounded a little dull and actually needed some top end, this is the stage to do it. What I've done is I've done yet another low cut and I've done it super low. The other thing I've done, the only other thing I've done is just to boost this frequency here and it's just 1 dB at around 120 Hertz and this is a fat frequency. It's not quite sub, but it's definitely bass. And it's when you want that really kind of thick, syrupy, warm, yeah, just rich kind of sounding vocal, this is a good one to, to boost. I'm not boosting any kind of mid range or high end because I've, you know, I've listened to this and I don't think it really needs it. So let's have a listen before and after. Next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things. And next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things. and. Again, it's a subtle improvement, but it is an improvement. Finally, we have our limiter. And the point of a limiter is not to compress your signal. And I know it is a type of compressor, but it's not what they're designed for. I don't think they sound good in that kind of capacity. I don't think they make for good compressors. So all I want this to do is to bring the volume up to a usable level, to a level where it's going to sound normal when I put this onto my video. What I don't want to see is much in the way of peaks clipping because it just doesn't sound good. So all I've done here is just add a seven and a half ish dB of gain. And that's that's quite a bit. But you know, I'll show you why this by the way is Slate Digital FGX2. It's you know, one of the best that I've used. I've been using the FGX series for many, many years and that they're, they're really good. Anyway, here's before and after next moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things and next moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things and 
No, we've got I had maybe one peak touch the, the limiter. This is always something you want at the end of your chain just to kind of make sure that it's definitely not going to clip. I've even lowered the ceiling by just a little bit, you know, just in case, because I really don't want it to go over. Also note the LUFS, the, the loudness unit, full scale. This, this is a measure of uh, relative volume. It's how loud it sounds to us as human beings. And I kind of aim for around minus 14. That's a good level. Uh, I believe that's the target if you were to upload songs onto Spotify. And let's just check what it is. Yeah, and that's basically exactly where I'd want it. I know that when I import this into my video editor, it's gonna be a really strong signal and I won't need to do any kind of volume adjustments. It's gonna translate really well to YouTube or wherever I'm publishing. And that is basically it. You know what? I'm gonna do a before and after. Here goes. Next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things and mirroring my comments of the build quality. I've just had such a pleasing good time Next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things and mirroring my comments of the build quality, I've just had such a pleasing good time using this interface. And there we go, it's subtly improved in, I think, every single way. It's slightly fatter, it's slightly more balanced, there's less sibilance and it's just more level and even um, and I think it sounds pretty great. Now this all may seem a little on the complicated side but to be honest you only need to get this right once and then you can save that project as a template and you're kind of good to go going forward. This makes it a really repeatable process and in theory when you go to record some audio next time you probably won't need to do much in the way of tweaking. In fact probably 95% of the time the only control I'm tweaking at all is within the limiter and that's just to make sure that I'm getting the correct output level and that's it. So now let's take everything in this video, grind it up, make a tasty espresso of tips to take away. Always start with EQ for removing bad frequencies. Recording studio engineers call this surgical EQ and this can make a massive difference to your tone. Next, I recommend using dynamic EQ and this is for controlling frequencies that you don't want to remove completely but you just wanna keep them in check. Next, we're applying compression and this is to control the overall dynamics within your track. Next, I add a second instance of EQ and this is doing the opposite of what the first one is doing. This is increasing the nice sounding frequencies, the ones that you want to accentuate. Finally, limiting, and this is to ensure that there's no clipping and you are achieving the correct final volume. I briefly mentioned the order in which you do these steps and I just wanted to kind of double down on the importance of that because one step feeds into the next. For example, you wouldn't want to add your second instance of EQ after your limiter, because if you're boosting, you'll be adding gain, and then with nothing to control it, you could experience clipping. The same goes for the reason that we cut our EQ frequencies before compression, because we're removing frequencies that we don't want to trigger the compressor. Does that make sense? The plugin brands that you choose don't matter. You know, free, premium, it just doesn't matter. The DAW you choose doesn't matter. The NLE you choose doesn't matter. The order that you place them in and the way you use them does. So there you go. Your audio may not require all five of these steps, you know, if it's impeccably recorded, but you know, this really is just the golden formula for sweetening audio, in my opinion. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. What did I miss? Do you agree? Please let me know in the comments section. And remember, you know, this was a viewer's suggestion. So, right? I've now made approaching 400 of these videos of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next. And the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you.